Hello everybody! Today we're going to be learning how to make an end game farm in the plains. We're going to convert this cleared goblin base, I'm sure you'll have plenty of those, into an awesome farm. Now, don't worry that this is a lot of seeds. You're not going to start with enough seeds to make this whole farm. What you really would do is start with a portal, a location, and one of these fields. Then, as you adventure and gather more seeds and more plants, you can come to your base, add another field, just like you've seen in this video, and work and build progressively up. You can bash away at stuff, or you can make workbenches. It's really up to you, but you gotta clear some space. Uh, boom! Here we go. Saved you the trouble of watching all that. Now, we have something resembling a bit more like a farm, right? And as you can see, I left a little area here, missed some stuff, and I put most of the stuff in here. Now, let's make this a bit easier to look at so we know what we're working with. I'm gonna use some magic. Boom. Alright, now it looks more like a field, right? Less like a goblin camp. I'd like to leave a little bit of remnant of the goblins, you know. Can't forget too much about their culture and whatnot. And I'll start right here. This is going to be a flax field. I'll make one model now to show you, but there'll actually be eight models and a central area for fighting when you aggro enemies. One of the reasons I cleared this out earlier is to make it very obvious how far we can reach. I'm clicking as far away as I can, and you can see that there's actually a limit. I can't just cultivate all up on the hill. It'll just go a certain distance away from the character. And I don't know about you guys, but farming in Valheim can take a really long time. So I try and set it up in a way where I can do a lot of farming really quickly, which is why I make these sort of circular farms. That way you can make a bunch of them and each one is a different crop and you can plant it pretty quickly because it's easier to go in circles and I'll show you how to do that. Let's set up another nodule. It's pretty easy, all you do is find a little area that's kind of flat, it doesn't have to be super flat. Just like this works. And then you kind of go, you want to start with making a circle, because this represents as far as you can plant crops. And we'll get rid of these objects. Alright, we're all cleared up now. I'll patch up this middle spot. You just sort of find an open-ish area, and then you make the farm in a circle. And you don't want to move from the center spot because the idea is that you just click in a circle when you're planting and harvesting stuff. So that way you don't need to move around and it's kind of faster. There we go. Now we have four. Five. And six. And seven. Awesome, now we have all of our fields. Now, it's a good idea to have a little area to store some stuff. We're going to start with some seeds. So, we're going to put another chest in the same area that I used earlier to destroy or store all of the goblin leftovers, let's say. In addition, we're going to build our portal because you can't farm everything in the plains. So you're gonna at least need a portal to your other base or to a Mislin's farm in order to be able to farm everything that the game has to offer. Now that we've set up our little farmer's hut, it's time to get farming. We're gonna need our cultivator and also a bunch of seeds. Let's start with some flax. You, you don't need that much flax, which is why we're only gonna make one field of flax even though we're gonna have three fields of barley. What I find is easiest is to plant the center with three, and now I'm going to basically just run around, not even run, just move around, strafe like this, and plant around those three. See? It's definitely not perfect. My mouse moves all over the place. Sometimes I break the plants and plant them too close to each other, so they die. But this is a really, really fast way that you don't really need to be that perfect. You don't need to match everything up. And you can see that in a short amount of time, 
You'll deplete your stamina bar and wish you had more stamina food and that you had a rested bonus. Now, don't worry if your center of the circle turns out to not be the center or if your circle turns out to not be a circle, as you can see here, that's perfectly fine. All you do is just run along the edge and spam click. There we have it. Here's our fully planted flax field. So now we're gonna repeat this process for all of these individual farms. Next, we have carrots and I'll use the same strategy. Just plant three sort of in a cluster next to each other. Carrots are actually really hard to see. And then you just kind of go around and spam click. And there we have it. Here's our field of carrots. On to the next vegetable. Those three fields over there are kind of close to each other. And we want to put the windmills to sort of process the barley in a convenient area. So those three fields are going to be our barley fields. I guess those two are going to be our onion fields. That's our turnip field or carrot field. So this will be our turnip field. Oh snap, this is what happens. You see, I'm just farming and then suddenly this fire goblin just comes out of nowhere and he wants my onions. Well, he wants me and he's not afraid to run through my onions on the way. What you'll find is that as long as they can see you, the enemies aren't really gonna mess with your crops. They're just gonna try and kill you and they're only gonna destroy your crops when you're in the field and they come and try and melee you and then boom, look at that, he's destroying crops. And that's a no-no. So that's why you sort of need that flat area where you can go. And you also need a good knife to really gut these mofos. Get them where, get them where they deserve. That's for all the Valheim players you've killed. Boom, we got more onions. Now for the last three fields, our barley fields. And we have another goblin ambush. As you can see, sometimes you don't even need to kind of take them, oh, take them to the flat area. I'm surprised that didn't kill me. Uh, you can actually just sort of keep fighting them in the farm. As long as you're not right next to any plants that are gonna screw things up, then it'll be fine. And then, you know, it's good fertilizer. When, when their blood soaks into the barley, you get more barley. Here we have it. We have our third and final field. Now we need to add our windmills and our flax spinning machine. And we need to deal with these Skeeters. Look at these guys. All right, Skeeters taken care of. Now we need to place the windmills. And because the windmills process the barley, it makes a lot of sense to put the windmills in between the barley fields. Now we need to place an artisan table so that we can make the sewing machine and also the windmills. I just place it anywhere, it really doesn't matter. You can actually destroy it after you make the other components. Before you place the windmills, you're gonna have a hard time unless you sort of flatten the ground out. They're one of those items like kilns and that kind of thing that are really picky about the ground. So we're gonna sort of flatten some area here and go to town. Now, the windmill has multiple sides. You see how there's this side with the chute on the left? That's where the flower comes out of. And then here, there's this bigger square thing that kind of goes up a bit. That's where the barley goes into. So you wanna keep this in mind when you place the windmill. Now, the last sort of crafting item we need to place is the spinning wheel. The sewing machine converts flax, which is growing right there, into linen. You don't really need that much of it compared to things like barley, so that's why we only have one field. And we're gonna place it under here because the sewing machines actually have to be under shelter in order to produce properly. Now for the final touch, we need a proper chest to store all of your seeds and harvest in. I usually use a black metal chest, obviously it's the biggest one, but you really could just use a bunch of these, it really doesn't matter, because most of your food that gets harvested is going to go through your portal and into the kitchen. Oh, magical. Now everything is ready to be processed. In the case of onions and most other things, all you do is pick them. But now it's time for you to learn the Eidgir method of farming. Here it is. Did you know this is a farming tool? What's funny about these is they say a warrior's weapon of choice if you inspect them, 
but they're actually incredible for farming, specifically flax and barley. And this means that you can just go in here, do the middle attack, and then boom, you just cut down most of your field. So all you need is to do this, you know, six or seven times, and then boom, you just harvested everything. And compare that to the process you need for something like onions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. You get the point. Like, yeah, you can you can get through the onions, but it's not really the same as just going hi and then just getting everything. I mean, you know, the eight gear is awesome, and you should really use it for your flax and also for your barley. Now that I have all this flax. I can just go over here to the sewing machine and then hold E and I'll fill it up. It can hold about 40 and then it's just going to convert each of those into linen. And because you only really use linen a couple times, you really don't need that much of it. So that's why I really recommend that you focus more on barley because this stuff is insane. You'll need a lot of this if you're planning on making, you know, lox meat pie and bread and that kind of food. So that's why we have three of these and only one field of flax. And that's it, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this endgame farming video. If you want more Valheim content, then check out my channel. There's a new Valheim video every five days at 10 a.m. Nicaraguan time. Comment below if there's something you want me to make a video about. I love making Valheim videos, and it's one of my favorite ways to play the game. If you want to support me or my work, then please check out a dedicated server. You can use my tutorial to set it up and everything, and I'll get some kickback for the sign-up that you do through the link. It's a great way to play Valheim with some friends because they can join and build stuff while you're not even on your computer. Whereas normally, people can only play with you when you're hosting the game for them. They can't just join the game world. So having a dedicated server is a great way to just kind of add some immersion into Valheim. It's going to enable you to do all sorts of different kinds of things with your friends should you choose to get into that. And it really opens the world with opportunities in this game. So check it out, okay? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.